Another rearrangement, and this is a, an equation you will need to know, is the combined gas law. You can rearrange PV equals nRT to solve for R. You may think, well, why solve for R? R is a constant. But since R is a constant, this combination of variables, PV over NT, will remain constant. So the PV over NT at one condition is going to equal the PV over NT at another condition. So this is an important relationship to use when you're going from one set of conditions to another. This is a little more flexible than the ideal gas law because you don't have to be in the units of R. You can be in any units that match except for temperature. Temperature still needs to be in Kelvin. And not always will all the variables change. So if a variable doesn't change, you don't have to include it in the equation. Let's look at this example and see how we would use the combined gas law. A tank of gas is initially at 5 atmospheres and 200 Kelvin. What is the pressure if the temperature increases to 400 Kelvin? So I like to recognize that this is a problem where we're going from one set of conditions to another. One way to recognize it as you're looking at the numbers, you're given two different temperatures. And so you see one condition to another. So list it out that we know P1 equals 5 atmospheres and T1 equals 200 Kelvin. P2, that's what we're looking for, and T2 equals 400 Kelvin. So when we look at our combined gas law, P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. We did not change the number of moles. Our tank of gas didn't change. So I'm going to cross out the Ns. The other thing that didn't change is the volume. The size of the tank remained constant, so even though we don't know what the volume is, it's the same, 1 and 2. So that simplifies our equation to P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And now we can just put in the numbers and solve the equation. Or, like with the ideal gas law, we can first solve the equation for P2 that's the variable we're looking for, and then plug in the numbers. So either way works. Let me just go ahead and plug in the numbers. We have 5.00 atmospheres, that's our P1, over 200.0 Kelvin is equal to P2, what we're trying to find, over 400.0 Kelvin. So we want to get P2 by itself, so multiply both sides by 400 Kelvin, by 400 Kelvin. And you can see this piece cancels, the Kelvin cancels, and 400 over 200, I can simplify that and just call it 2. So I have 2 times 5, so P2, um, sorry about that equals 10.0 atmospheres. And that makes sense because if we doubled the temperature, we're going to double the pressure because they're directly related. Here's that written out a little bit more neatly. Let's try another combined gas law problem. And of course, on a test, I won't tell you it's a combined gas law problem, but as you read it, you can see we have two temperatures, temperature, temperature. Um, we have two volumes, volume and volume. And so that's your clue that it's a combined gas law problem. So let's write down the variables as we read it. So a sample of gas has initial volume of 158 milliliters. So volume one equals 158 milliliters. And a pressure, P1, equals 735 millimeters of mercury. And a temperature, T1, equals 34 degrees C. 
Um, and then the gas is compressed, so here's our V2 equals 108 milliliters, and heated T2 equals 85 degrees C, find the pressure, P2 equals question mark. That's what we're looking for. So here's our givens, and also our find is the question mark. And so let's look at our equation. We have P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. The thing that didn't change, N. We have the same number of moles. The other three variables did change, so we'll leave them all in. The next thing to look at is units. Now, we don't have to be in the units of R. So milliliters is okay. They're both milliliters, I'll leave it. Millimeters of mercury, that's okay. I'm gonna leave it. Our answer is gonna turn out millimeters of mer mercury, but we can't use Celsius. So I'm gonna add 273 to these, plus 273 equals 273, so that we're in Kelvin. So 34 plus 273 equals this one's 307 Kelvin and then 85 plus 273 this one is 358 Kelvin another thing to consider is let's let's wonder is the pressure going to go up or down well if you look at the volume the volume went down so volume went down that's going to mean pressure will go up and if we look at the temperature, the temperature went up, and so that is also going to increase the pressure. So we know the pressure is going to increase. We're going to have a higher pressure. P2 is greater than P1. Um, this time, let's rearrange it and solve for the variable, and then plug in the numbers. So I have P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Okay, P2 I want by, my, by itself, so I'm going to multiply by T2, divide by V2. So times T2, divide by V2, V2 cancels T2. Okay, so now I'm going to put my numbers into this piece. So P2 equals, so I'm going to start with T2, 358 Kelvin, P1, 735 millimeters of mercury, and then V1 is 158 milliliters, and then divide that by V2, 108 milliliters, and T1, which is 307. Kelvin. And now I'll just multiply by everything on the top, divide by the bottom, 358 is in my calculator, times 735, times 158, divided by 108, divided by 307, equals, and I get 1, 2, 5, 3.9 millimeters mercury. As my answer. Um, so that makes sense it went up but my significant figures I can't keep all those so um, I can only keep three so I'm gonna go to scientific notation one two three I'm gonna call this 1.25 times 10 to the third millimeters mercury. So here it is all typed out, a little easier to read. The air around us is made up of mostly nitrogen and oxygen. So you can see that it's 78% nitrogen and about 21% oxygen. Nitrogen is fairly unreactive and so that's what most of the air is. Oxygen is more reactive and is very important in 
all the life processes. And so oxygen usually reacts at higher temperatures, so it's stable usually in the atmosphere. The rest of the air is made up with, of a combination of other gases, and you can see them listed on this chart. The water in the air depends on the humidity, so water is also an important part of the air, but it's left out of this uh, for that reason. One thing to notice is carbon dioxide right here is only at about 0.04% of the air, uh, but it's growing because of the combustion reaction that we talked about in the organic chapter. And some of the things in the air are considered pollutants, and you can see those listed. And they're so small that they're often considered in parts per billion instead of percentages. So let's revisit stoichiometry. We've talked about stoichiometry as a way to um, determine how much reactant or product you can get in a reaction. And the heart of the stoichiometry problem is this mole ratio where we convert between moles of one compound to moles of another compound based on the balanced reaction. So we've talked about these other conversion from number to moles using Avogadro's number, from mass to moles using the molar mass, and from volume of a solution to moles using the molarity. And we're going to add one more, the volume of a gas, we're going to convert to moles as well. And we're going to do this using the ideal gas law. And we're actually going to make an even further simplification. So remember, the ideal gas law gives us PV equals nRT. And n is the number of moles. So we can solve that for n equals PV over RT. And that will give us the number of moles. If we know the volume, the pressure, and the temperature of a gas, we can find out how many moles. And we're going to simplify one step further and talk about a standard temperature and pressure. So what standard temperature and pressure means is that the temperature is 0 degrees C. Well, let me rewrite that. 0 degrees C, or 273 Kelvin and the pressure is one atmosphere. And under those conditions, one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. So you can see this is our simplest conversion of all. To get from liters to moles for a gas, we just use this conversion right here, 22.4 liters per mole. So let me show you how that works with the problem. In the green box, we have a problem. How many grams of water form when 1.24 liters of hydrogen gas at SDP completely react with oxygen? So we have our given is 1.24 liters hydrogen at SDP. And our sign. is grams of water. So here's our given, and here's our sign. So we're going to start with our given like we always do, 1.24 liters of hydrogen. And this is the gas. And so if we look at our chart, we're starting right here at the volume of the gas. And where we're ending is right here at the mass of a product. So here's our path. We're going to go from volume to moles, mole ratio, and then up to the mass. And here are the steps. So the first step is going to be this STP conversion. So on the bottom, we're going to put the 22.4 liters of hydrogen per one mole. Okay, so that's our conversion to get liters of a gas to moles, the 22.4. Our next conversion is going to be the mole ratio. So now we're at moles, we want to go to moles of water. 
So here's where we use the balanced reaction. So we have two moles of hydrogen will give us two moles of water. Okay, so our liters of hydrogen cancel, our moles of hydrogen cancel. And so now we just need to go to grams. And so we add up the molar mass of water. So we have hydrogen, 1.01 times 2 gives us 2.02. .02. And oxygen, 16.00, so we have 18.02 grams per mole. And that's what we're going to put right here. We have one mole on the bottom, one mole of water. That's 18.02 grams of water. So the moles of water cancel, and let's get a number. So 1.24 divided by 22.4. These twos, I'm just going to cancel them out. Times 18.02 equals, and I get 0 0.998 grams of water. And that's my final answer. So the thing that we've added that's new is this conversion for a gas at SDP, and it's the simplest of all of them. Here it is written out and typed. Hopefully you can read it a little better. And so to summarize all of stoichiometry, and I kind of did that on the previous slide, for any stoichiometry problem, you know it's stoichiometry when the given and the find are different compounds. So that last one, our given was hydrogen, our find was water. So when they're different compounds, that's when you have stoichiometry. And the first thing you need is your balanced reaction. Often that's already given to you. So start with your balanced reaction. And then what you, whatever number you're given, convert it to moles. And now we have four different ways of doing that. If it's grams, divide by the molar mass. If it's number of molecules, divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If it's a volume of a solution, multiply by molarity. And if it's the volume of a gas, divide by 22.4 liters per mole at STP. And I don't remember all those. I just let the units guide me and think about the different conversions. So that's step two, get it to moles. Step three is the mole ratio, and that comes from the balanced reaction. So go back to that mole-to-mole -mole ratio from your balanced reaction, and then your last step is whatever units you're requested, you're in moles now, just convert back to the requested unit, and it's just the reverse of what we did in step two. The essential skills for the gas chapter Describe and predict gas be behavior based on kinetic molecular theory. And I didn't cover that much in the video lecture, but it's in the slides and it's in the book. Use the ideal gas law to calculate the missing variable. Convert units as needed. So that's the PV equals NRT. You'll need to know and use that equation. Also the combined gas law. Know and use that equation and be able to solve stoichiometry problems involving gases at STP. So know that one mole equals 22.4 liters at STP.